Hello and welcome to this video for today whether you're here for the first time or you're returning hope you will enjoy It's me your geeky host Adam here for another video today and in this video for today uh, we're talking about something that I've wanted to talk about for a little while and uh, you know Commander is for the most part <laughs> you know again for the most part not all of it more, the more CDH style levels are not really about this but most of it is about politics and making deals and whatnot that sort of thing that happens in Commander that you know players do people make deals with people all the time uh well not always but all it does happen where people play uh play this whole game of you know trying to negotiate with other players and i really like uh politics and i know some people really don't like politics and I do agree that there is a point when politics and trying to make deals has to stop and has to sort of, you know, take that back seat and you just have to calm down and you just like, you know, let one person try to make their pitch or whatnot of saying, this is what I'm offering, you can take my deal or you can take, you know, Steve's deal or whatever. And then you let the other person say, hey, look, this is my deal. You can take my deal or you can take Alan's deal or whatever. You've got to have that somewhat discourse. You can't always, uh, you know, sort of just be like trying to compete with each other and talking over one another too much. And again, sometimes it's not like that. But again, it does happen. So people do need to remember that, you know, there are, you know, if, if it's at your own house or whatnot, or if it's on online, you know, th there's only those couple of people in the sort of chatter or whatever. But if you're out and about, if you can get out and about, uh, into uh, the local game stores and whatnot, that there might be other people or other players or whatnot around, and they just don't want to have to be hearing this sort of argument between people no pick me pick me pick me sort of thing you know like they'll understand it to a degree but again it is very it can get too much and again you've got to come to a point where you know you finish negotiating or whatnot or somebody's made their decision to do what they're gonna do you can't you know make somebody change their mind too much you've got to just go okay all right they've made up their mind it is what it is i'm going to continue to try to do what i can do or i'm going to change tactics instead of trying to politic with that person i'm going to try to politic with the other person or whatnot so that then i can have a deal over here with the other person and then that way i can do something that helps me maybe and again People have to realise that, you know, politics and deals need to end. And the way that people politic things sometimes is a little bit too much. Leave me alone for five turns, you know, whatnot. Things like that. It's probably too much to leave someone alone for five turns or whatnot. It's probably too much to leave them alone for more than a turn or two uh you know this turn and this turn cycle is usually the only deals that i can ever see being made anymore because the games change so much in just a turn cycle once you've dealt with somebody who seemingly was the threat then the other players suddenly seem to be like well this other person is now gearing up and you know what I actually need to deal with what they're doing and do I need to make a deal with another person do I need to make a deal with the person that I just you know essentially took down off the high perch 
you know, or do I need to make a deal with another player or whatnot? How can I navigate that sort of thing? Uh, politics are very difficult and very hard, and it's one of those things that, you know, is an art. It's not a, you know, you know, this is the science of politics, and I'm not going to try to tell you, you know, that any form of politics is right or wrong to a degree, but again, you should be considerate of what's going on and why it's going on. And again, some of these factors will play a part in uh, what you're doing and what not. So when you're pl making deals and you're making politics, I always try to keep any deals or any politics to whatever's happening within the game. Again, essentially, if you offer anybody anything that's outside of the game, even in Commander, I think it's sort of one of those things, well, it's really starting to become more bribery sort of thing. If somebody says, buy me a Coke, you know, maybe that's not that bad. It's a very small thing. But again, essentially, you're buying somebody's favor or whatnot uh sort of thing in the game with something that's outside the game so i always try to limit what's being bartered and what's being offered and whatnot to what's in the game what's on the field or what's in your hand sort of that sort of stuff never try to offer anybody anything that's not within game related especially uh you know romantic or sexual or other favors or whatnot things like this uh you know whatnot that sort of stuff and don't you know be like oh we'll be friends or whatnot if you if you want to be friends in the game or whatnot then that's fine that's a bit different but you know oh, i'll be your friend if you don't attack me or whatnot I thought we were friends, you know, sort of thing. It can lead people to be like, hey, I thought we were friends. What? You know, or saying we won't be friends if you attack me or things like that, you know, break up or whatnot, you know, things like this. You're putting too much on the line then to a game. It's a game. People should be able to play the game and not feel awkward in playing that game when somebody's like, well, you know, if a boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever, oh, I'll break up with you if you don't, you know, if you attack me, you know, whatnot. And the other players are just like, uh, maybe we should we should leave and just like get out of here because these these two are just having problems that we can't solve. You know, people want to play the game with people who can play the game within the game. People don't want to play the game with players who are, you know having all these other outside things for the most part coming into the game you know i sort of want, went and talked about the distractions in magic and whatnot uh and i might do a podcast on that and whatnot it's one of these style of episodes i think that'd be interesting but again that's another topic for another day to a degree but again you know the thing is about deals in commander again is that Again, they are temporary. They are going to have to end. And again, you know, the deals cannot last for very long. Yes, a turn. Yes, a turn cycle. Also, whatever. Yeah, sure. But you can. You should always have the option of saying, okay, well, unless you do something really dumb, again, then yes, absolutely, I will do this. But if you play something way too powerful, like you play your uh, Nyx Blue Mage, a uh, Nyx Blue Mage, or something like that, then I'm a hundred percent have to kill that because you untap with Nyx Blue Mage or something like that, then you're just gonna go off and just win the game off of something like that. It's way too powerful to let somebody have that kind of a card on the battlefield. So. Just, can, you know, like you never know what somebody's going to do. They say that they're going to do one thing, 
but they have always got a plan B or a plan C or a plan D in their hand. And again, you know, you should always try to solve a problem yourself for the most part or have the answers somewhere in your deck for the most part because it's not you can't always rely on your opponents. Sometimes you've got to rely on yourself. So you kind of have a deal with yourself uh, to be like, okay, I am going to find the answer. Even if I am saying to my opponents, you know, we'll have a deal. If you answer that or whatnot or whatever, I won't attack you. Or if you attack this person, I won't attack you next turn or whatnot. Um, or if you kill his creature, or if you do this, or if you do that, little deals that just say, hey, for this turn, we're not going to do anything to each other. I have the monarchy right now. You know what? I'll let you attack me with a small creature, and I won't block it, and you can get the monarchy off of me, or whatnot, things like that. And then next turn, I'll attack you with a small creature, and... I will get the monarchy back, and we'll keep trading it like that. We'll just keep hitting each other with very small creatures. We won't hit each other for much. We'll just let each other hit each other to get the monarchy back and forth between us. You know, things like that. That's one of the best things about the monarchy, because you can make a deal over it. It's one of the best deal-making things in the game. Um, you know, resources, cards, removal, uh, other things like that are usually pretty good deals like evasion on creatures is sometimes a good deal if you go to attack and you attack that player i will make your creature unblockable or if you go to attack that player i'll give your creature double strike or i'll give your creature menace or when you play a creature i can give your creature haste if you attack another player things like that those sorts of things can persuade people to be like Okay, we'll have a deal for now, you know, and again, you know, just for those few turns, if you start saying, oh, well, just be nice to me and, you know, I'm just here to chill and we're just here to have fun and whatnot, again, at some point you've got to, you know, like, again, it depends what's in your hand, of always, because you're always trying to get the mana and cards and whatnot that you actually need to actually execute whatever you're doing. So if you want to slow roll it, you want to kind of get there at a slower point, just sort of make sure you're not too big of a threat until you can actually go, you know what, I have the other thing that's in my hand that goes with this really well, and that will basically, you know, win me the game. I have Avenger of Zendikor and Crater Hook Behemoth or something, whatever. I have those two cards in hand, or I have a good way of playing something that basically says, ha, ah, I've got a heck of a lot of damage on the field. You know, I've got a Traxor or a whatever. Oh, oh no, a Traxor. I've got um, Elish Norn or whatever. I've got, you know, Enray's Forerunners or I've got an Overrun effect or something like that. Just those sorts of things where you can go, haha, I can play these two things almost together at the same time and that will mean that I can do a lot more and make a huge impact and get way ahead really quickly, really fast, and therefore I will, you know, be dominating the board and or be able to, you know, feasibly win from doing these things in such quick succession and no one will really see that sort of coming for the most part. And maybe at this point in the game, since they've used a fair amount of their resources, they won't be able to, you know, answer what I'm doing. So, you know, deals always set you up for playing the game, you know, deciding which way you want to go or whatnot. You know, again, it depends what you're playing. You could play, be playing Aristocrats and you just don't have your sack outlet or you don't have your, uh, you know, Zulaport cutthroat or whatever, your draining effect things like that, and you're just sitting there with a whole bunch of these random O1s and 1-1s and 2-2s and things like this that just sort of are sitting there and not really doing anything. But then you suddenly find a uh, free sacrifice outlet. Well, 
you might just sit there and go, well, I don't have the other piece, but I don't have the Zula Port Cutthroat or whatever, or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. But again, you don't have the other piece. You know, you have all these things, so you're just going to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to add a few more other creatures to my board. I'm just going to seem like I'm still not really doing anything. You know, I'm not going to present myself as a threat till I have enough creatures on board to sort of go, okay, if I play these two things together and then I sacrifice everything, then I, at this point in the game, because people's life totals are a lot lower than what they were at the beginning of the game, it will probably win me the game. But those politics were still the important part. You're still trying to say, hey, look, all I'm doing is amassing my dudes just for blockers or whatnot now. This is what I'm doing. I don't have anything else. All I'm doing is trying to protect myself. Can we have a deal? You know, this sorts of things. You need to make sure that what you are doing, though, isn't too threatening. And you do need to realize that people, you know, may still hit you. They may still do stuff to you sometimes because, you know, they can and because they might need to. Again, if you, as again, I sort of said the monarch is one of the best ones. But, you know, somebody can say, well, I've still got to hit you or I've still got to take your life total down or I've still got to mill your cars or I've still got to do stuff to you. Even if you're not the main threat, you're still in the game and I can't just sit here and, like, kill everyone. So I still need to do something that progresses the game forward in some more meaningful way so that I can eventually win the game. So it's one of those things that you should say, hey, even if we have a deal, how about we make a bit of a new deal and you can do this as well where you sort of you know quote unquote go back on your deal and I'll talk about more about going back on your deal in a moment but you can sort of go back on your deal and say hey look you know that deal we had you know I have this card you know that does this thing and basically what it means is that if you know I hit you that I will get in a benefit, but it also helps you if you hit me. So, you know, the Monarch is the best one, but Edric is another effect that's like this. There are a couple other effects that are like this. Um, treasures and whatnot, or there are some treasures and whatnot, or things that give treasures. Um, the, um, the big artifact uh, that, um, you know, comes down and makes three mana and draws you three cards, the six mana one, I can't remember, uh, jewel, coveted jewel or whatever it's called. Um, you know, that one uh, can be a great one. Uh, other cards like Humble Defector and things like this. So you can say, hey, look, I have Humble Defector, or I have this, or I have coveted jewel or whatever. So I will give it to you. Or I'll, I have Edric or whatever. But the best thing for me to do is to hit you as well. But at the end, I'm still only going to hit you with something small to change the deal we had. But, you know, for the most part, we're just going to be mutually exclusive or whatnot. We're not going to be adversarial. We're still, the main focus is this other player or... You know, if that other player suddenly isn't a threat, maybe the other player is. Or maybe, you you know, you've become a threat to the person you've had a deal with. And now they've got to go, well, you know what, uh, maybe I won't take that deal. Even if it's advantageous, I might just be like, well, I will take it just for now because I will get something out of it. But then after that, you know what, you're the main threat. So, you know what, I've got to actually start doing something against you so sorry again now that you're the main threat over here that you've given me this sort of deal I've got to go back on it because you know either I've got to or I've got to just say well I guess I'm getting second or whatnot and be happy with that or I've actually got to turn around and say well you know what I actually want to try to win this game uh, so you know what I'm just 
not going to adhere to that deal again. So adhering to deals and not adhering to deals and breaking deals or whatnot is a big thing. And I know some people make uh, breaking deals like a big thing. And it is a big bit of a thing uh, as well. But the thing is, people should realize that deals are going to fall through for the most part because they always do there's always something else that changes in the game the game always evolves and there's always another threat at the table that you've got to try to deal with until it's you and then you're on top of the mountain and then everyone's trying to punch you down so it's one of those things where You've always got to keep your head on a swivel and you've always got to keep your options open. You just can never sort of say, oh, well, I'll never make a deal with this person or that person or whatnot. You should always be open. And again, you should never, uh, you know, make a deal for too long. And you should always, always be like, well, at this point in the game, unfortunately the deal that we had i've got to break it and you shouldn't feel too bad about breaking deals look i've had deals with people and you know sometimes it's it's funny to sort of play around and be like but we had a deal you know things like this but again you know you've got to realize that that's how it happens i've had people you know that i've been playing against make deals against me because you know, they feel that I'm the arch enemy, and maybe sometimes rightly so, you know, again, I don't care, but it's cool to see people being like, this is what we're going to do, but I've also pe seen people betray uh, people as well through their deals, uh, because they thought, oh wow, I've got this and this, and now I can win, haha, <laughs> our deal was for nothing, you know, old chum, you know, sort of thing, and then you kind of go, oh, cool, that's great. Does does your thing have haste or can you actually do it now? And they're like, oh, yeah, I can't actually do it now, can I? Because of that other thing that I forgot about, my stuff enters tapped or, you know, no, uh, you know, I can't gain life or I'm only on one life or whatever or whatever, you know, things like this. So I can't actually do it, so I can't actually pay for this or I don't have the mana right now to do this other thing that I actually need to do oh yeah ah right mm. <laughs> awkward <laughs> you know things like that there's always something that somebody's sort of forgot don't forget that when your creatures ETB you take take a damage or when you when you go to attacks you if you attack me you take the damage or if you attack that person you take a damage and they go ah oh, oh no 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 or don't forget that when you attack that person you've got to pay two for uh you know propaganda or whatever and then they go oh but i have no mana uh, no oh no and things like that so it's one of those things that you know there's always something that you know is is out there that you kind of forget oh yeah yep i forgot about this one other thing you know that was very insignificant for most of the game and oh yes yes i forgot about that or you know like things like this happen all the time and it's very hard to sort of go back to being like well we still have a deal right buddy i just tried to kill you but we still have a deal you know but you know like again you know, you can obviously, when somebody try, you know, Sammy breaks their deal with somebody, that can be your opportunity to try to be like, hey, you know what, you guys have had a deal against me for a while, and he just tried to break the deal, you know what, instead of killing you right now, uh, for this turn, I'm just going to try to kill him because he's a dirty, rotten deal breaker or whatnot, things like that. If you want to try to kill me, you can. But for the most part, if you don't kill me the next turn, you're definitely dead. Things like that. You can be just like, hey, look, this is a little deal that I'm offering you, you know, just for funsies and whatnot. You know, things like that. You can throw those things out there or you can just, you know, again, some decks are very 
much political decks. Some decks are meant to be this is a politics deck or this is a group group you know you know sort of deck where it's a it's all about the group it's all about you know politics with people or group hug or sort of you know political control sort of decks you know where you know i'm giving you things or giving you options or making you do things in such a way or you know sort of being group huggish in such a way that you know benefits everyone but i'm not benefiting one person uh, more than the others but the one person that's you know getting so far ahead of the others is just often the person that you've got to stop and you've often got to stop the group hug player as well because the thing is they're the one funneling all the mana and all the cards to the person that is becoming the problem so you need to get rid of the fact that the this player who is at the top of the totem pole is getting all of the mana is getting all of the cards and is able to take you know advantage of it much better than the other players until the other players can sort of catch up or balance it out some other way to being like well look group hug player you shouldn't actually be playing group hug on this person or you shouldn't give this person anything more than what you're already giving them you should be giving resources and other things to the players that are behind so that those players can you know start trying to deal with what this other person is playing but that's not always the case because usually those decks once again are more political control they're making you do the work for the most part and they don't really benefit you from you know not really doing what they want you to do so they're not going to give you something as much for nothing yes you'll still get some stuff for nothing for the most part but again when you need something they won't directly give it to you and whatnot for the most part so again like there are decks that are quote unquote donate decks like zedru uh, but usually those decks are donating things to you that you don't want. But there are donating decks like uh, the five color um, uh, Clothus or whatever it is that, um, you know, you can give it to an opponent and they choose a creature type and the creatures of the chosen type get plus three plus three until end of turn that's a uh very powerful card uh you know and it can be a voltron commander and whatnot but again in that deck you give away things to people so that you like can grab like so that you can like here's this creature i will give it to you to attack this other player or whatnot so you know or i will give you this artifact or i'll give you a mana post combat because you attack this other person or i'll give you this for an exchange doing what i want you to do so there are those decks that are out there that do sort of donate things to people or whatnot there are also the sort of donating decks again like i said zedru that are more like giving you stuff that says basically you either can't play the game or you will lose the game very quickly uh there's a new commander from uh the commander legends set i know that's not that new anymore but it's still fairly new uh but again that sort of when it hits a player you can donate something of yours to a player uh so you just run all these things that you want to give away to people that aren't as beneficial to you but sometimes will you know slow your opponents down or will actually help your opponents sometimes in some cases a little bit to you know sort of be able to shift around the focus of the game and be able to 
slow down the opponents that need to be slowed down and speed up the other opponents that, you know, need to be sped up or whatnot. You know, you can do all these sorts of different weird things that are a lot of fun. And again, that's all part of the political process. You'll say, hey, look, I'm going to attack this person. You've got um, the uh, unblockable... You've got this ability to give my creature unblockable. If you give my creature um, an unblockable so that I can actually hit this other person, especially in that deck, but, you know, uh, you know, I will hit them and I will give them this bad thing, but I will give you this mana rock or whatnot that I don't really need right now uh, so that you can, you know, because you, you've missed several land drops or whatnot, so that you can actually catch up, things like that. So again, there's all these different decks that are out there and all these different people that are out there and people play politics in different ways. Again, in CDH it doesn't really happen that much. It's all more about threat assessment and I think the political sort of side of it is very small. You've got to be more convincing to say, hey, look, you know, right now my thing it may look like a threat or whatnot, and you might assess it as a threat, but it's actually not a threat. It's or it's not as threatening as what that person has over there. They can actually win the game with what they have over there. And a lot of people know what the what cards win the game or what can win the game or whatnot, and what is an actual threat. If you say, "Hey, look, all all I've got currently is a bunch of counter spells and some lands," you know. Things like that, you can make people be like threat assessing what you have a little bit less, or you can sort of try to move the threat assessment around and whatnot. Those sorts of things. That is a lot harder to do, and you've really got to know what you're doing and whatnot. And it is much more that people will know more about what is a threat and what isn't a threat, and they won't be fooled too much in those sorts of decks. But again, you can try to do that, but again, for the most part, I find that politics, the main politics that you sort of see out and about in the format is seen in the more casual metas, and it takes lots of forms, but again, you should be considerate to say, well, I'm not just going to make deals with anyone, I'm not, you know, I'm not always going to make a deal, sometimes I won't, sometimes I will, but I'm not going to be, again, close to making deals, and again, I will be always open to uh, changing deals and going back on deals if necessary and whatnot. Or if I am going to stick with the deal for a certain amount of time, that I will reap the consequences of that and know that I will probably uh, lose because of those deals that perhaps I, you know, should have broken or whatnot but i made a deal which perhaps i shouldn't have done and i should have made it for a lesser period of time or less specific or found a little loophole in there to say hey you know you said i wouldn't touch this card or that card but you didn't say anything about this card or whatnot and you said i won't touch your board or i won't touch this but you didn't say anything about draining your life, and it's not really that I'm targeting you with draining your life. I'm just happening to be draining your life because, you know, I have Zulaport Cutthroat, and it, you know, affects all of my opponents. So you can find things around some of these little things uh, sometimes. So you just need to be aware that, you know, politics isn't an absolute. It's a thing that you've got to you know, work at playing around with, with your friends and with other players when you play them and whatnot. Different players will play politics in different ways again. You know, things like that. So you've just got to get more experienced in doing it. And again, always keep your deals to what's on the table, what you can offer within your hand. And never, never really lie, but sort of don't give too much away as well when you're making deals because you... You don't want to say, I have X card or I have Y card, unless it's actually on the field or whatnot. Um, 
things like this, even like just trading creatures. Somebody sometimes has like solemn simulacrum on the on the battlefield and says, I really want to kill my solemn. Will you block my solemn so I can draw a card off of it? And you're just like, oh, okay, I'll block it. You know, whatnot, things like this. So I have, you know, different things that want to die, but I have no way of really killing them or whatnot so that I can make them into better things or whatnot. But anyway, guys, uh, you know, that has been uh, a bit of an interesting discussion into politics. Um, tell me what you guys think. Do you play politics? How well do you play politics? Do you think you play them well? Do you think you play them not so well? Have they ever bought, bit you in the butt? Um, you know, let me know right down there in the comments below. Please remember that the success of channels like this is based on viewers like you. So please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing if you would like to support this content. You can also get social with us on our Discord and on our Facebook. If you would like to further support the channel, you can go onto our Patreon. All links are in the description. Thank you for your support. It really means a lot. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video here today. And if you have, I hope you will come back for another one. See you then.